ti gbogbo eyin lo fi apara sori ko ni yoruba space tv nibi ta ti ma ma won eto ati iroyin wa pe yin lu loko ojo kan gbogbo to sele kaakiri nigeria papa ni le yoruba ti wa ewo to ba je igba koko ti yin re lori kan ni yi e ba wa subscribe e si ma gbagbe lati te button kekere to da bi ago yen ti o ma ta yin loko ni mo wa gba ta ba ti mu video to bi wa sita ewo eyi ta tun fun wa fun yin lo ni ara oto ni oya e wa lo bo se nbo इनकाशन <laughs> pe a n ko igbon jo lati da ija lati da election rule and so on well i want to say congratulation to the yoruba people actually you know maybe i should start by speaking english because i am addressing this to the international observers who are all over nigeria observing the election some of them are people that we know personally a man of greatness and integrity in their own right but they have lived to come and uh, they have been lived to come and uh, observe the nigerian election and we need to let them know the truth behind the election uh one thing that they must have noticed in the is that the military is unusually present in some places in a in a day of election it's not supposed to be so if the election in nigeria is free then you cannot militarize any city or town as you have done in nigeria now as you have done in the south west where we belong to the yoruba people belong to as, as you have done in the east as you have done in some parts of the middle belt you have militarized a major part of nigeria and yet you are claiming that the election you are holding is free it is not free we want our intellectual observers to, to, to recognize that another thing which is very even more important that we want our international observers to recognize is that this election is taking place is going on against the background of a war that is being fought in our country there is a war going on in our country the observers may not may not be able to get facts about that but there is a war going on in nigeria it has been going on since 2015 8 years of warfare it, it is get more and more light so it, and it is not really part of the politics of nigeria that can lead to an election it is some a section of nigeria a small ethnic group in nigeria says that their intention their, their what god has given them the power to go and do is to convert the whole of nigeria to their ethnic homeland to subdue subjugate kill may destroy among the ethnic groups of nigeria in order to subjugate them and make them slaves in their own homeland to a small ethnic group that controls the government an ethnic group has taken over the government of nigeria completely Completely, all the security positions, all the security agencies are, are entirely in the hands of the same ethnic group, and they are just seven million in a population of two hundred million. But because they enjoyed, the, um, uh, they were given not that they were given preponderance of position. in the federal government at the independence in 1960 they have 
steadily, progressively use the powers of the federal government to subdue the other peoples of Nigeria. So they have now reached a point since, since 2015, they have now reached a point at which they can say, at which they are saying, that Allah has given them the whole of Nigeria for their homeland. They have never had a homeland, but they are now saying that they will have a homeland soon because Allah has given them the whole of Nigeria as their homeland. And Allah has just given them the mandate to go and seize the place violently. So they say, we are going, we are coming to kill, to maim, to destroy. And they are coming to kill, to maim, and destroy. When this whole thing started uh, in, uh, in 2015, oh, most of us thought it was just uh, some uh, little uh, uh, intensification of, of the traditional farmer, herdsman clashes. And we said that, a lot of us said that, our intellectuals, our professors, our others, our elite said that. The world took it from us and we said, oh, it's because a uh, uh, drought has destroyed a lot of grasslands in the north and so the, the, the cattle herders are coming south. It is not so. We have now discovered that it is not so. There is a plan There is a plan to bring all the Fulani in the whole of West Africa to Nigeria to get them to relocate the president of Nigeria. President Mohammed Buhari said in 2017, in a, in a, during a visit to another country, that anybody, everybody, anybody who is in Africa, who, who is a is a South African is free, free to come to Nigeria without holding any documents, no passports, no, no visas, and so on. We now know that that was a secret coded message to the full and it will start coming, and they have been coming in their hundreds of thousands since then. They are pouring in, and when they come, they are instantly given Nigerian citizenship. And they are giving voting cards. And they are also assisted to spread to other parts of Nigeria where they, they, they go to kill, to maim, to destroy, to, to rape, to kidnap, and extort large amounts of money for ransom. They've been doing that. But it has reached a point now that they are planning for the final final assault that will make them finally the owners of Nigeria. And as of us who are not of their ethnic group, slaves in their homelands. It is very near. The entry of, the, of this uh, non-Nigerian who are coming in in large numbers at the invitation of uh, President Buhari is increasing dramatically. They are coming. They want to go around every part of Nigeria. One of them said, we are going to kill, to maim, to destroy, and make Nigeria our homeland, whether you like it or not. Allah has given it to us. So, uh, as an election is going on today, and it looks like oh, nothing is, in, is, is okay in Nigeria. The president, uh, former president of Nigeria, General Basanjo, who is perhaps the most famous Nigerian in the world today, that war is that war is coming in Nigeria. He used the word war is imminent. 
War is inevitable, he says. Because if Fulani want to conquer all the peoples of Nigeria and turn the land into a Fulani homeland, he said it explicitly. He said the Fulani are trying to Fulanize and Islamize Nigeria by force, and that that is going to lead to war, that the war is going to be horrific across the whole face of Nigeria, and that it will export terrible human suffering to the other countries of West Africa. So there is a war going on as we are, as the election is going on today. People are being killed in the, in the, in the rural area. In some places, and maybe they have been instructed not to do such things today, not to block the highway, drag people out of their cars and kill them or, or, or spirit them into the forest where they're held as as captives, hostages, demanding ransom before they can be released. Is that is going on all the time. It may not happen today, but it will happen tomorrow as when this election is over. So we want our international observers to know know what is happening in the country they have come to. You are looking at an election, but you are looking at an election against the background of a war that is going on in that country. We have a duty to let you know the truth. And I just must go back to my people, I, my Yoruba people. They said they were collecting weapons, uh, buying guns and so on, accumulating guns to fight. Where is it? Where is it fighting? Where are, where are the guns? We Yoruba decided from the beginning of our struggle for self-determination, for separation from Nigeria, that we will operate only by peaceful and law-abiding ways and means. And that's what we've been doing. We've held rallies, humongous rallies, but each one of them has been peaceful and law-abiding. We held a big rally in Ibadan, our capital city, and it was about 1.1 million people. And we thought, oh, wow, to so another capital town of ours, the town of Abelkuta, a few days later. And the crowd there was larger than the crowd in Ibadan. And the crowds kept getting larger and larger and larger from Ibadan to Abelkuta to Shub. Until we came to Adoekiti, where the largest crowd ever got estimated at 3.1 million people. Probably the largest rally in the tree of Nigeria. And in all of these rallies, nobody clashed with the police. The police did not arrest anybody. Nobody got wounded. Nobody was arrested. That's how peaceful we can be. That's how peaceful we are. Culturally, that's how peaceful we are. And so uh, uh, we want the world to know that we are fighting to separate ourselves from Nigeria, but we are doing so peacefully and in a law abiding manner. And I want to speak, I say to my people now, oh yeah, let the election go on today as, as they have planned it. We shall see what happens after this. We shall see what happens tonight because nothing is sure in Nigeria. Uh, Important thing, the important thing for us Yoruba people, we are fighting to separate our descent nation from the barbarism of Nigeria, and nothing is going to so. We are going to separate our nation, and we will need the help of some of our of the gentlemen and ladies who are the, the international of dialogue today. We are going to separate our nation from Nigeria. 
But we are not the only nation in Nigeria that want to separate from Nigeria. Big Goa, we are even doing before us. They want to create a new country called Biafra in the world. And they have suffered a lot. They have been terribly treated by the authorities of Nigeria. But they are not giving up. Those observers who are in the East today will see that the voters are few there because they have decided that not many of them will go and vote. So the picture being held out of a country in which a peaceful election is taking place and so on is a fake, fake picture. The truth of Nigeria is that nothing is stable anymore. It's the security uh, springs of Nigeria have all broken. There is no place. There is no place that is safe anymore in Nigeria. Even Abuja, the city of the government of Nigeria, is not safe. The president himself is not safe there. He was traveling recently. Just outside Abuja, bandits waylaid him, ambushed him, and damaged some of his cars and killed some of his officials. So that's the all the villages that surround the great city of Abuja have been taken over by terrorists. There are many important roads in Nigeria that nobody dares to travel in their own cars. You cannot just pick up your car and travel from Abuja to, uh, to Kaduna. That's the most important road in the north. And sometimes it is as unsafe as that. In the most important, on the most important road in Nigeria, the Bada Lagos Expressway. That's how we live here. That's how we live. Nothing is safe. And in the past two, three weeks, it has been real madness. First of all, it was uh, petroleum uh, products that ran out so that we couldn't fill our cars and, and travel. The then the Nigerian government, and then because of the, the petroleum was out, we couldn't have electricity supply. And then the Nigerian government had announced that we are changing the face of our currency. The and they have made so such a mess of it that people who have rushed their old notes on instruction from the government who have rushed their old notes to the to the bank cannot get new notes. And even people have big bank accounts cannot get money to spend. And people are fighting the banks. Some people go to the banks, treat themselves naked, men or women. Some are committing suicide. Some dying in shock. That's the situation. We want the world to know the truth. I want to put the, fruit, uh, the truth in your hands. As foreigners, important foreigners from your homes who have been asked to come to Nigeria to be observers. That's all I have to say. I will to say thank, uh, thank you for the Yoruba nation, for the people of Yoruba nation of behaving according to your character. There is no violence in our land today. That does not mean that we are happy. We are not happy at all. We want to get out of Nigeria as speedily as possible. And we are going to do so. And we say, as our people say, there is no going back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yoruba Nation. Mokibo Boyin, 
and your mouth do a book of your uh inspector general police kuramara mawa about uh a week ago we are one no bad to call it but our fedja fedja connection one one to read there one call I mean, but want to call me there that I see a quality bad and the other parts of the Ubala. The Yajoruka won't believe that we want to come here. One fed subdue one. They want us to be, to, be, to, to be aware that there is power. The Nigerian army is powerful. No question about it. It's the 25th most powerful army in the world. And they are sitting on it and using it to intimidate and terrorize us. So it has come to you, Bala, to go see you, Bala. In your main prayer, one can tell why. In Katan, one prayer, and what country Tarawa, Kaja de Kuru, no man, my dad de Kuru, no man, did I think of controlling the one? Both your journey. I want to let you know what I want to say. I I so, wow, Maru Katun shall let Nigeria. I want an election. I'm about my call report. I want an election. This will be my one. But in country and try like it's of money, you pay for our audio dealer. Election, I won't go. But oh, 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 2015, Logo At this stage, by like the the final stage of the war, according to General Massanger, only the ultimate phase of the war is going to happen, and who is who is who will make a spark it off, and then there will be a war all over the land, the bloody and in. Uh, destructive war in every respect, more destructive than most wars that we have seen in history. And then it will push millions of Europe, uh, of Nigerians out of Nigeria. As refugees all over West Africa, bringing pain and destruction and disruption everywhere. General Danjuma, former defense of Nigeria, told us Yoruba people, what are you doing? There are these people that have, have entered your country. They have surrendered your, surrounded your country. You need to find some way to defend your land and your people. That's our situation. We don't care what happens from, where, what comes, comes out of the election. All we care about is that God will open the door for us to get out and be a separate country of our own in the world. And we will become a separate country of our own in the world. I congratulate you, Yoruba people, for behaving the way you have done today. No, no, no violence. But we know what we want. And we shall get it as the Lord lives. Thank you very much. Odama.